Yo, what's going on, people? Welcome back. Welcome back, one and all, to Football Therapy. With me, your host, Jan. I hope you are all doing well. Really do... Sorry. Really do hope that, friends. Welcome back to Chelsea News. And boy, oh boy, is there news. There's lots of news. Uh, yeah, the series, of course, here on Football Therapy, where I see what's being said around the rags about the Blues giving you my opinion on it, but of course, more importantly, asking for yours, dear viewer, that's right, you sitting right there, I care about your opinion. So welcome on in, we're talking about Sal Niguez no longer going to Chelsea, wow, wow, Jules Koundé trying to force a move to Chelsea, wow, when a deal cannot be struck, yet Zuma looking like it's done, also have Man United enter the chat as a title race contender, or a title contender in the title race, maybe. Lots to talk about. Consider subscribing, friends. Still haven't got the widget on the screen. I'll need to sort that out. Consider subscribing. Hey, and please, dear sweet friend, drop a like. It does help me out in the dark abyss that is the YouTube algorithm. So thank you for dropping your like and subscribing. Broken widget. Yeah, cool. So let's start off with Sal. We're reading off the uh, We Ain't Got No History SB Nation um, website. We're going to talk about Saul, of course, Jules Gunde, and then um, Zuma. Hey, Cristiano Ronaldo, why not, you know? Saul Niguez set to stay at Atletico Madrid. Set to stay. Stay. I want you to stay. And all that. Uh, no Chelsea offer expected. Report. I saw some reports suggesting that there was an offer, but it had, quote, vanished Psst, into the ether. Like Arsenal's top four hopes. <laughs> so, let's have a read. The chatter about Chelsea supposedly biting on the chance to acquire Sal from Atletico Madrid has died in the last few days. As now, per Mundo Deportivo, the 26-year-old midfield... Uh, midfield? Midfielder, I assume, is in fact set to stay at his club. It's not the greatest source for this story, admittedly. Fair enough, being honest there, uh, SB Nation. But it does make sense. Chelsea supposedly tested the waters with a loan bid earlier this week, complete with a buy option if things worked out a la Mateo Kovacic, something we of course discussed on yesterday's Chelsea News video. In theory, it could have been a good move for all involved. A low-risk financial, high-reward sporting operation. And low-risk sporting, but high-reward financial operation for Atletico. That was true, it did seem like a good deal all round. But it sounded like Atleti really wanted a buy obligation um, instead. Interesting. Uh, not, to, not just to get his wages off the books uh, while the player himself... To, yeah, to get his wages off the books, like, indefinitely, I suppose. Uh, and the player himself evidently clocked that being fourth... I mean, I don't know if this is speculation here, by the way. Evidently clocked that being fourth choice at Stamford Bridge perhaps is not the best way forwards especially as he's been fully involved at Atletico so far this season, playing every minute. I thought he was playing it right back. And it's said to retain a good working relationship with Diego Simeone, despite a notable drop in minutes last season. Sorry for hitting the microphone there, friends. Interesting. Mundo's reports claim that, he, uh, that this was a last potential exit door for Sal this summer. And unless an unexpected last-minute bid arrives, he's set to stay, Sequeda, and all that. On our end, it's probably good news for the likes of Ruben Loftus-Cheek or Ethan Ampadu, who can thus fill who can thus fill that fourth midfielder position alongside the likes of versatile Trevor Chalaba, of course, and not just tra uh, blah, 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 Trevor Chalaba. We've talked about Reece James in the midfield. We've speculated about uh, Andreas Christensen going back into the midfield. It's not the end of the world. This isn't like a transfer tragedy. We knew he was going to be a fourth choice. We knew he was a high quality fourth choice option. That's what he'd be coming in to be. So, you know, having to switch from this fourth choice option to you know, the, the two aforementioned players in Ampadu and Loftus Cheek, who most Chelsea fans really rate anyway. So, you know, it was alone. Like, you know, it's not the end of the world. It's disappointing in the sense of transfers are fun uh, and exciting. And fun and exciting stuff is, of course, fun and exciting. So you're like, ooh, a new shiny toy in the midfield. But the truth is, Thomas Tuchel has often come out and said, look, you know, I'm stoked with the squad. Even before Lukaku, he said he was happy to go into the next season with the same squad. He thinks he's got loads of tools and he thinks they can improve. Even if in the background, he's probably thinking, but they better get me a striker. 
They got him a striker. They got him a really good striker. So everything now is a bonus, absolutely. And I think he understands that he's got defenders, he's got midfielders, he's got so, 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 so many attackers that I think things are going to be all right. But on the defenders, let's talk about Jules Kunde, because this did look like it was going to get done regardless. And I'm not sure this is in this article from Football365 we're about to read, but the reports are suggesting Jules Kunde has deliberately not travelled with Sevilla and is doing everything he can to try. He's doing a hazard kaza. He's doing a, yeah, obviously I haven't travelled with Sevilla and I want my move to City. I'm in Chelsea. He obviously wants this move, so he's not travelled with the team. I like this Naga sponsor with uh, the chili on. That looks cool. Um, let's have a little read then. Chelsea, quote, confident in securing Kunde deal after Zuma sale. Ooh la la. Published on at 8.33 this morning, at time of recording, 9.42. Chelsea are confident in securing the signing of Sevilla defender Jules Gunde once the sale of Kurt Zuma to West Ham United is complete. Right, I thought that was a stumbling block. Let's read on. Kunde has been a target for the Blues all summer, with notorious transfer journalist Fabrizio Romano breaking the story last month and has been providing frequent updates on the saga. Tottenham were also chasing the Frenchman, but he was not interested in a move to North London due to their lack of football. Sorry, lack of Champions League football. Don't play much football either, do they? Top pants. And his move to Stamford Bridge has been hinging on the future of Zuma, as Chelsea have been keen on offloading the 26-year-old West Ham... Uh, West Ham are close to signing the centre-back, but had previously been put off by the Blues asking price and the players' wage demands. Hammer's boss, David Moyes, confirmed the deal was imminent on Friday, saying, quote, We have had an offer accepted from Chelsea for Kurt, but I could not tell you if the medical has been completed. That is pretty concise and transparent from the manager. A player could have signed and been taking pictures holding up the shirt, but until it's tweeted, managers go, I'm not talking about other people's players. They just do. So for Moyes to be like, yeah, we've had an offer accepted. Don't know what's going on with the medical. Everything's fine. Pretty funny, really, in my humble opinion. Um... Blue's boss, Thomas Tuchel, also confirmed a deal was close. Yeah, this was, and I said this was um, almost peculiar from Tuchel. He said there's been negotiations between West Ham and Chelsea about Kurt. Kurt right now is not with us because of these negotiations. A little bit more reserved than Moyes. He's had some personal and family issues. We've allowed him to travel to France. There are negotiations, but to be very honest, I don't know where that leads. Those things, uh, things can happen at this stage. Yeah, a little bit more reserved and coy from Thomas Tuchel, the Chelsea boss. The Blues will make their final push for Kunde after this transfer is complete. And are quote confident in finalising the move, according to Romano. He claims Chelsea will submit a 50 million euro uh, bid for the Sevilla man. However, the Spanish club will want more to sell their star centre-back. Talks are ongoing and the situation is quote tense. Let's read, his, 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 blah, blah, blah. Let's read Romano's tweet. Jules Kunde deal. Oh, I can just read on here. Um... Chelsea are prepared to submit 50 million euro, but Sevilla want more to sell their centre-back. Tense situation, but talk still ongoing through intermediaries. Chelsea want to find a solution. Kunde is waiting and pushing for a move. Like I said previously, some reports suggesting that he's not turning up to work, essentially. Trying to push the move to Chelsea Football Club. Sevilla's club president, Jose Castro, said, Kunde is our player. As of now, there's nothing agreed or done at the moment. We are always... We always consider the offers, but the days are ending. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> That's profound, isn't it? Morbid. But the days are ending. The days are ending. They will stand firm in negotiations, ensuring Chelsea meet their requirements. Well, their requirements are, I think, like, pretty much, there is the release clause for Kunde, which, of course, uh, is too much. Let's talk about this, friends. Uh... Do, you know, it's an, it's another like desired target for to call long term planning for the succession of Azpilicueta at that right centre back spot, eased by the emergence uh, of Trevor Chalaba. So it's not the end of the world. Like I said at the top of the video, it's not the end of the world. This stuff happening or not happening, it's uh it's totally fine. So um, oh, just realised something. It's totally fine. I'm okay with it. 
we can go into the season with this amazing squad that we have. Even if we sell Kurt Zuma, we've got, who have we got? Christensen, Thiago Silva, Rudiger, Azpilicueta, Trevor Chalabar, and indeed, Reese James, who can play centre-back. Like, it's not the end of the world, is it? That's six, that's six into three. Uh, that's what you want in terms of cover. You want two for each position. Yes, you're a little bit auxiliary with Reese James there. But I think it's, I think it's fine. Uh, and to be honest, if if the Kirk goes, I think Chelsea... I think almost this bid for Jules Koundé, they're probably thinking if Kurt doesn't go, we can still do it just. But if Kurt goes, they'll probably just bump up the uh, offer and uh, and be like, yeah, man, just take it. We're going to have him. So I do think we'll buy him still. It does look like we won't get midfielder, but that's totally cool, I think, personally. But let's talk about the title race because Manchester United have signed Cristiano Ronaldo. <laughs> this window, bro. This window. Um, everyone talking about Chelsea being the most likely contenders for Manchester City. Uh, I think we're second favourites to win the title. Closely uh, positioned next to Liverpool, with Man United being they were like eight to one or something. Now, now, surely Man United have um been absolutely cranked up. I'm just going to search right now to tell you as I'm speaking to you what the odds are since them signing Cristiano Ronaldo I'm on odds checker um, and this isn't what I wanted this is the games Premier League winners I, I realise this is not the best content me searching stuff for you here but I want to just quickly check this so I can react to it live here we go Man City 5-4 to four. Chelsea 11-4 to four. we were 5-1 to one pre-season Man United are now five to one. That's what Chelsea started the season at five to one, and they were like eight to one. So signing Cristiano Ronaldo has cranked them up a little bit, but not astronomically. Um, I'm so so keen to see how he does, uh, Ronaldo, to see if he bangs. I mean, he'll bang goals, obviously, but is he gonna like be part of this high pressing Premier League team that you have to be at the top level? Is he sort of gonna cruise around and try and score goals? Um, how is he gonna be utilized? Is he going to be just played as a striker down the middle so he doesn't have to run or track back? Probably. Anyway, let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you think of uh, the midfielder situation, Jules Koundé, and of course, Cristiano Ronaldo and stuff. It's pretty epic. Um, I'll be keen on reading all your comments. I, I like to see your thoughts down in the comment section. So please do that. Consider dropping a like to help me out. And sub if you're new, if you want to. Hey, only if you want to. Anyway, enjoy the football. <laughs> I'll see you later.